Welcome, welcome everyone. It's Jacqueline here with my cooking class. Just wait for a, a minute or two for a few of you to jump in so that we're not starting by myself. That's no fun. I'm sure there's gonna be some people inside. Let me know where you're chiming in from. It's pretty hot here. What's, what's it like at your place? Is it smoking hot where you are? All right, it is officially three o'clock. So welcome to today's cooking class. Hi, hi, hi. I am in a heat belt. I'm not sure what it's like where you are, but hey, Leah, um, it is hot here. I'm not sure if you're Canadian or American, but uh, it is 37 degrees here, which is just, just shy of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which means I am not cooking on the barbecue because it's in the heat of the sunshine. Like last week I did a, a pizza on the barbecue, but this week I'm actually going to be getting us refreshed using this product, which is the poke bowl. Yeah, you might look at it and go, okay, how do you say this? Poke bowl. No, it's the poke a bowl. Anyway, today um, I'm going to be doing a poke bowl uh, using this. And I'm going to talk about two additional products that you might not be really familiar with. One is brown rice and the other is our mm, better than mayo. Okay, so first off, let's talk about the rice because I need to get this cooking. And um, when we're doing this, this is our round steamer. You can use a square steamer with the lid, but I uh, want to show you the round steamer here. And uh, hey, Verna, brown rice, just so you know, is very different than white rice. Although white rice was brown rice, I don't know, right? Here's how it goes. Brown rice um, is actually got um, outer shells and they process it and then it becomes white rice. So it's got bran and germ on the outside. And the outside of brown rice is actually where the vitamins and nutrients are. So when they process it and make your white rice, it isn't as good for you. And gosh, we need to make sure that we keep ourselves healthy all the time and this is really good it's much better if you are diabetic because it's got a lower glycemic index number so what basically that means is it's going to fill you up and it's just going to stick to your bones it's going to make you feel full and uh, make you feel full for a longer time so a lot of people use brown rice as a way to shed pounds so if you're um, trying to don that amazing bikini in these hot weather and you're wanting to maybe uh, shape it up a little bit brown rice probably should be in your diet okay now when you're cooking this the ingredients for cooking it are the same as white rice you you just add water and the rice but because it's got an outside shell on it, it requires more time cooking. And if you're doing it conventionally, following the package instructions, this, to cook it on the stove, which is heating your house up, oh my gosh, this is going to take over 40 minutes to make. Let me introduce the steamer. All you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your steamer. You're, I like rinsing my rice anyway. So white rice, uh, a cup of that, I rinse it and then I add two cups of water. You're going to then put the lid on it and microwave it for, my microwave is quite strong, but 21 minutes. That's a long time, but you need to be able to have the moisture penetrate that outer shell. I'm gonna show you what it looks like because I've got the TV version or the <laughs> Facebook version. Let me show you what it looks like when it's cooked. Okay, so this is the rice and it is perfectly cooked. Let me grab a fork. Check this out. Do not, seriously, why would you use a steamer, rice steamer? This doesn't even stick to the dish, seriously. And the rice is done absolutely perfect every single time. I love it because it's, um, like I said, it sticks to your bones and it has that really nice texture. Now, I like it better than white rice. 
but it does take a little bit more time. Anyway, so there's your lesson on rice. Okay, so now for the poke bowl, let's get started. This is a product that just came out this season, uh, which was the beginning of July. And we're gonna use our scissors here, and we're just gonna open this up, and we're going to dump out the package. Okay, ooh, sorry. <coughs> It's got some fine granules. I'm gonna just stand back because it's gonna choke me. Okay, so what ingredients are in here? Okay, so it's got, oh goodness. <coughs> I thought I, whew, I thought I would stay away from the dust, but it's gone right down my throat. Okay, so it's got organic palm sugar, organic lime juice powder, multidextrin. Let's talk about that because some people read this on a label and go, hang on, is that artificial? Just so you know, if Epicare uses multidextrin, it comes from rice or tapioca. We do not put in all those crazy fillers that you can't pronounce. So if you see that on the label, just know ours is not artificial. It gets in there naturally, okay? Uh, then we also have uh, lime juice concentrate, garlic, chai, um, chilies, basil, cilantro, chives, mint, black pepper, yum. Can you just taste this? It's delicious, guys. Hey, Colleen, nice to see you. Okay, now the reason we're putting this in a bulb is because we're not just dumping this in. We're actually going to break this into two separate um, areas. So I am going to just grab a prep bowl here, and I wanna talk about our better than mayo. Okay, this product is so fabulous, and I wanna tell you about um, the Mayo Wars, back in uh, 2014, I think it was, Hellman's Mayonnaise, are you familiar with Hellman's May Mayonnaise? Hellman's Mayonnaise actually took a little tiny company called Hamptons Creek to court because they had a product called Just, Just Mayo and they said it was fake. Because in order to be a real mayonnaise, you need to have three ingredients. You need oil, you need a citrus, and you need egg yolks and Hamptons Creek didn't have that. Now, this dragged out in court forever, and you know what the saying is, if you can't lick him, join him. Well, here's, here's the deal. Now, Hellman's actually has their own, they wanted to call it fake mayo. Okay, Hellman, call it fake mayo. They, their Hellman's olive oil mayonnaise is not actually mayonnaise either. So, you know, they, they were just jealous, you know. <laughs> There's a story. Anyway, so Epicure's Mayo, just so you know, has no egg in it. So if you've got dairy and or, um, egg intolerances and you, you need a substitute, this is amazing. And it is so easy to make. So all you need is an electric mixer or an inversion mixer. I mix this up in advance. And uh, you just add a little bit of water, a little bit of vegetable oil, and a little bit of vinegar. Now, the recipe says white or apple cider vinegar. Heads up, use white vinegar. I've tried apple cider vinegar, but it throws off the flavor. And I actually use this to make um, a tuna salad sandwich, open-faced tuna salad sandwich. Want to know proofs in the pudding? I wish you guys could taste this, but look at Creamy tasty, amazing. If I can eat, lick that right off the fork, you guys know it's great. Okay, so let's get back to what we're doing here. So this is our better than mayo, a quarter cup of that. We're going to add three tablespoons, which is why we dump this out. So we're going to do one, two, three. And of course you saw they weren't totally filled. So we're gonna put that in. We're gonna add a tablespoon of water. Perfect. And now we're going to add a couple teaspoons of gluten-free soya sauce. I like using low sodium if you've got it, but um, use whatever you want. Of course, everything Epicure carries is gluten-free. So that's one of the reasons why I always have gluten-free soya sauce in my home. So a couple teaspoons of that. And then using our little mini whisk, I love this, it's so darn cute. Hey, Michelle, good to see you. 
we're just going to mix this up. That's the emulsifying, right? Because mayo, just so you know, means emulsify. So we're just going to get this mixed up nicely. I don't know. I should probably move this off to the side so you can see. This takes a little bit of work because that mayo that I mixed up, um, the consistency is, I find it's quite thick, which is great for a sandwich. Oh my gosh, I can hardly wait to tomorrow. I'm gonna have toasted tomato sandwiches with mayo. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so this is becoming our dressing. Getting a little bit of work out here. So there is our dressing for our poke bowl. Notice, mm, oh my gosh, like licking my fingers, sorry. <laughs> it's a good thing it's just for me. Notice I still have some of the seasoning left over. All right, so now that we've got this done, what we need to do is we need to figure out how, what we're gonna do with the remaining. Now, poke bowl, here's the deal. Fun food fact, or where did this originate from, I guess, comes from Hawaii. Yes, poke bowls have been around since the, uh, well, they've been around for a very, very, very long time. But in about the 70s, they started coming over to the mainland, so North America. Um, and in fact, Hawaiian restaurants, I don't know if you remember the big rage on sweet and sour and things like that restaurants doubled, Hawaiian restaurants doubled their number that were in the United States and Canada. Yeah, and that's where the poke bowls came into play. Now, the poke bowls that we have today are very different from the original poke bowls because the original poke bowls used raw fish. Well, this is cooked shrimp. It's the closest I'm gonna get. I don't live on the ocean. I probably wouldn't have raw fish, especially when it's 100 degrees outside. I can just see this as an accident to happen. So to make the sauce that we're going to coat our shrimp with so it gets lots of flavor, we are going to use the remaining mix and we're gonna put a tablespoon, a tablespoon here, of rice vinegar. Pour that in. We are also going to add a tablespoon of soy sauce, which is right here. And we're going to add a little bit of sesame oil. Love this, a little goes a long way. So do not use a tablespoon, flip it around to the other side. This is our four in one spoon. And we're just going to put a teaspoon of that in. And I am just going to find a little, my little, silicone knife here, mix that up a little bit. See it's more liquidy. We've got one that's more a mayo base. And we're literally going to just pour this over our shrimp to season it. Can toss this around a little bit, making sure that they all get that nice tasty flavor. And then we're going to use our veg. So let's just tidy up here so I have got a little bit of space. So we've, again, we've got our marinating shrimp. We've got our dressing. Okay, now I think everyone should be playing with their food, right? So I, have, I don't know if you've had a chance to look on our online website recently, but every once in a while we bring new product in and this is our veggie twist. One second, I've still got the mm -mm, tickle in my throat. I'm gonna just grab a cup of water. Sorry about that guys, but it's probably better than coffee. No. Okay, so this is our veggie twist, and this thing is so fun. It looks, it's sort of like a pencil sharpener. When you purchase it, it also has inside here um, a brush. This is great for cleaning it off because the blades are super, super, super sharp. And we've got two different options on here, so I wanna show you what they're all about. So this is a zucchini, and I don't know if you saw the little posting that we saw on Tuesday, but uh, we talked about, uh, or sorry, Monday's Muse, um, but we talked about zucchini can be 
noodles. Okay, so one side has additional blades. So we're gonna slice it. Where's the slicer? Slice it here, but then it's cutting it in the insides with that blades. Quick little tip here. If you get a ceramic knife and you're going to want to um, score this about a quarter of an inch down. And I'll tell you why. Lady in the Tramp, do you guys remember that? Where where you, they were sort of eating the spaghetti in and in. If you don't cut this, your spiralizer will just make a long, 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 long ribbon. And uh, that's fine, but not for a salad, because you might just want to just have the fork outside. So all we're gonna do, we're just like a pencil, we're just gonna twist this, and you can see it's making little noodles. Now, again, sort of looks like a pencil now, right? Okay, so that's one option. The other option is you can literally flip it to the other side, and now this just becomes a slicer, so you can, Hang on, I've got to get past those blades. Now it just becomes like a ribbon. So let me show you that. Isn't that great? So just some of the things that you can do with this fun little spiralizer. The kids can play with it. It does have a finger grate when you do get up towards the end. Um, so you definitely don't want to put your fingers in there. And when you're done with it, clean it out. Pop the brush back in there so you don't lose it and put it away. All right, so we've got some, just slide this over to the side. We've got some zucchini that we're going to put in here. All right, let's talk about putting on, and this basic poke recipe um, basically can be made with anything. What have you got in your fridge? Basically, that's what poke is. I'm just using whatever you want. So I'm using our mandolin. I've got the larger 3.5 millimeter thickness on here. I'm using the grate so I don't cut it. I've got a little bit left of cabbage here, and I'm just gonna slice up some of this so I can get some nice flavors and colors. That's sort of the fun of a poke bowl too. Okay, so we've got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of purple. How about some green? Okay, so we can use our ceramic knife. We can do some slices like this. We could have used the mandolin if you prefer, but I just wanted to show you a few things. Or here's another thing. We've got this fabulous little Y peeler. And you know how I did ribbons with the spiralizer and they're sort of in circles. Well, if you use the Y peeler, you can actually do different ty types of ribbons. These ones are straight. So it depends on what you want. Now, here's a little tip. If you did this with zucchini, you can actually put a meatball or a tomato in between and slice it wherever. Doreen says you haven't seen that in the catalog. Doreen? I'm assuming you're referring to the veggie twist. It's not in the catalog. This is, um, thank you for asking that amazing question. That product is in the last chance area. So if you go to my website, it's uh, if you scroll up above, you'll actually see it. This is a limited time availability. So you wanna grab it while it's here. I love it because it's just so darn easy and the kids will play with it and if you have, kids that are fussy eaters. This might just be the exact thing to have them eat their veggies. Kids love playing with their food, right? Okay, what else do we have here? Okay, I was at the grocery store, I'm sorry, at the farmer's market the other day. Peas! Okay, so the original recipe had edanami peas. That They're expensive. If you've got a little garden or you've got a little farmer's market, chances are you're gonna find these peas. You guys know how to open them. You just basically press the end and it pops open. Slide this out. I'm just gonna put peas in here. You can cook them or you can eat them raw. I love eating them raw. So here are my peas for my edanami. Um, mango, there's lots of mango around right now and I love, uh, when you're cutting a mango, by the way, you'll notice the shape of this one. You slice, I love this one because the seed is not that large. Those big, huge mangoes, they have a really, really big seed. So um, instead, I, if you can get these, I think they're called Alfonso 
mangoes. They're, they're my favorite. And notice I'm being very careful. It's a really, really sharp ceramic knife. I'm actually cutting in here and you can actually cube it right in the shell. Make sure you don't poke it all the way through. Be gentle. If you feel that your skills aren't that good, you might want to, you could use a peeler and peel it first. But I like literally doing this, popping it inside out. This is a great way to display it on a charcuterie board, by the way, right? It looks like a little, I don't know, pterodactyl or um, prehistoric creature. And then you can just cut off your little cubes and put these right on your poke bowl. So I've got more nice colors going on here. So you get the idea. Perfect. Okay, and now we are going to just assemble a bowl. Super, super easy. How does it work? Okay, so to assemble the poke bowl, and again, the instructions are right on the back, but it says when you've got all your veggies cut up, you're literally going to spoon your rice. So here's our brown rice. Put it on the bottom of the bowl. And remember, this really sticks to your ribs. A little goes a really long way. Honestly, um, I find brine rice really, really fills you up. So I would not fill this bowl too much. And then it's just a matter of, with your uh, poke bowl, the way it's designed now is you put them in groupings. So you'll put your, maybe your yellow there, you might want to put your purple beside that. You can put some, got some green in different directions here. So my cucumbers that I've sliced a few different ways. I mean, you can do it so it makes, looks more uniform. You could just have the circles. Then I might want to put some yellow again. Get my mango in there. Gosh, can you, can you tell? This is going to be a really filling, filling salad. Tuck that over and we're gonna put our peas on here. I'll leave some for Dawn. Uh, my shrimp, I'm gonna grab my little grip and grabs. Flavor is great. This is cooked shrimp, by the way. So I just wanna put a little bit maybe on top here. I don't know, I probably will put maybe six or seven. Perfect, that sort of breaks that up a little bit. And now we're going to put our dressing on. Grab a spoon here. I'm just gonna, well, I'm gonna, uh, a way for weight wise as well. If you put the dressing off to the side, here's a little tip. So every, every little taste is perfect. Um, dip your fork in your dressing and then go grab your veggies because that way every every little bit has the dressing and your plate still looks nice. So I'm just gonna put a dollop on the side here of my dressing. And if you want to finish it off, how about our poke bowl, oops, let's get the label pointed towards you, our poke bowl topper. And this is, um, this blend actually has a little bit of sesame seeds, onion, uh, seaweed, ginger, cilantro, and celery seeds. And you can just sprinkle that on. And there you have it, guys. Here is your poke bowl. You are right ready to now wait no time in the kitchen. You can go out, enjoy the sunshine, the beautiful day. Remember to give this a try. Our Better Than Mayo is so darn good. Like it is seriously good. Eat it off the spoon. Uh, make sure you, you try some brown rice next time instead of white rice. It's a nice change. And any time that you can get your produce fresh at a market, remember you're supporting a local person in your neighborhood and people like to do business with people that scratch their backs, they'll scratch yours. Yeah, it's just nice to have a really nice community feel. If you're wondering what else could you do with your poke bowl, one last thing. There are two additional recipes I can hardly wait to try. Listen to this one. Coconut lime rice bowls. 
coconut lime rice bowls. What's the difference? They put um, co light coconut milk in when you're cooking the rice. Yum, 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 yum. And there's also a recipe for salmon and smashed cucumber salad. So give this a shot. This is a summer product. It's only here for a limited time as well. Make sure you grab the veggie twist. This is not in the catalog anymore. The only way you're going to find it is go to my website. Um, check the link above. I hope you enjoyed today's cooking class. It was really fun. I'm so glad that you popped in to see. And uh, whew, no heat in this kitchen. So enjoy. We're, Don and I are going out on the boat. I bet you can guess what we're having for dinner. Take care, everyone. Thanks again, and we'll see you again maybe next Thursday. Bye for now.